Welcome back to GB Guns. You guys asked and I persisted and we're out today with the PSL. All right. Tia is a big fan of this gun. <laughs> We've uh, had this thing a little over a year now and some of you saw the article in Tactical Life Magazine, started getting requests, hey, how come this isn't on the channel? So here it is. We've got it out in the complete trim as we reviewed it in that article, um, using an RS Regulate adapter to be able to put a modern scope on there so we could have the optic over the bore and a little more magnification, as well as a reticle that's more suited for target shooting. This thing is very comfortable to shoot, Thanks to the massive brake at the end, along with that long stroke and the springs at the end, spring in the buttstock. We're going to try to group for you, if I can get my tripod to cooperate, with all of these different loads. Now the one challenge with this thing is it's not particularly accurate. Um, those of you who read the article understand and know the basis of what the actual application of this was. It was not intended to be a sniper rifle, but we have a couple different loads here, including some of these interesting Patrolnitsia Lavia target rounds produced in the 70s. And what you're looking at with all those numbers there is they've got, uh, for example, in the bottom right, the Vies Puli, the weight of the projectile is between is 11.71 to 11.75 grams. So this is match ammo produced in 63, I believe, for 7.6254, likely for um, some more precise applications. But we had great results with this when we did the article. We also have some modern production PPU match, we've got Wolf, Barnall, some S&B, and two types of surplus ammo, both the armor-piercing steel core and the regular kind, as I recall. I haven't opened these in a while. And we're going to try to throw them at 100 yards and give you an idea of what it's like to shoot this beautiful piece <laughs> of Romanian hardware. So just to make sure we were still on, took a couple shots using some Barnal, just three, that fourth one was already here, using a target that somebody had left up at the range. And you can see, it's not too bad. However, we've discovered, as many of you should know, that not all rounds have the same point of impact. And since we zeroed with the Barnal, busting out that old surplus stuff, our first 10 shot group, so you get an idea of what to expect from an average, two shooters, each shooting five shots, was with the surplus stuff in the paper bag, the non-steel core, but by a metal jacket, and that's the target we were aiming at. That's our group and point of impact. So it looks like what we're gonna have to do is come down here and mark these off in between shots, because, sorry folks, we're not gonna re-zero that scope for every load, but wanted to give you an idea. This is that cheap surplus ammo that used to come in the spam cans for 10 cents a shot or 15 cents a shot. We're looking one, two, three, four, five, six inches low and about four inches left compared to where we were actually aiming. Still Although, a good group though here, minus those two flyers. Yeah, which, and those flyers were probably ammo related. This is probably 70 year old ammo, but the majority of the group is about three inches wide, two, three inches tall, very much combat effective.
So, standing and waiting, unfortunately, seems to be something you get to do with the PSL. We've noticed that this thing gets real hot real quick. As I showed you in the tabletop, got hot enough to boil some of the laminate off of the handguard there. And so, kind of got to give it a break every once in a while. While she, Tia was shooting her last group, she said she noticed her point of impact was shifting throughout the string. That's at the same cadence. In fact, it's the very group you saw in her shot cadence sampling. And uh, so we're gonna try to let it cool down a little bit. What's it at now? It's at about 170 now. Okay. The first temp I took was 175. And when we were zeroing or checking zero earlier, we had it around 110, 120 at the gas block. That doesn't seem very hot. In fact, it makes me wonder if maybe our thermometer is measuring in centigrade <laughs> instead of <laughs> Fahrenheit. Maybe no, it it's Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, doesn't seem super hot, but uh, we do notice performance changes. So once again, going back to the original intent of this rifle, not meant to be a high rate of fire, high volume of fire gun just a target of opportunity kind of thing but we're gonna let it cool for a little bit before we resume So we had to step out into some relative daylight because it was getting too dark out here. Um, we're a little north. And it's been a little foggy all day. And this time of year, there's not really much light. Um, we shot the PSL before, and we got to spend today doing it again. <laughs> Tia, since you seem so excited, what are your thoughts on the PSL? I just, I, I love that it's a, an, it's an AK. And, you know, I, I can make tight groups with it. And I can do that, you know, maybe with the AK pistols. But I don't know. There's just something about putting it on the bench, the way that it smells when it heats up, um, how soft it is for the size of round that we're able to use. And that it, it gives us decent results. Yeah, through most of the 10-shot groups, and keep in mind, that's five from myself and five from Tia, you're looking at two to three inches ish uh scored a little better than that um last time we we're out here with it it seems to like the heavier loads um and tia mentioned heating up uh, i know we covered this briefly before but really you do see a performance shift uh, once it gets hot and what we did to try to be fair with these groups was to make sure that we were both starting our five shot parts of the grouping with the gas block being around 125, 127 degrees. Fortunately, that didn't take too long because it is chilly out here. <laughs> uh, as far as what the groups actually look like, now we can step in to show you a little better. That stuff's the 1970s uh, Milserp. Over here, we also have some of that Milserp mixed in with some of the Barnall 148 grain. How did that happen to you? I, I got a little confused about my left and my right. <laughs> we were trying to aim here <laughs> and up over here. Um, so you see some of the spread is mostly the 147. Uh, like we said, it seemed like the heavier stuff. Um, this here is your Milserp, um, the generic stuff that comes in a baggie. And then down below, uh, we had PPU match, which did really well, and the cellular a lot, which also did really well. It was uh, amazing how much better it did once I knew precisely where I was supposed to be aiming. <laughs> and something, and speaking of that, part of the one of the challenges we had with this is uh, we're using RS regulate mount to be able to put a modern optic on there, but for some reason um, the optic couldn't be 
I couldn't lower the reticle enough uh, for some of the rounds. And then the other rounds hitting, well, we'd have about a 10 inch vertical spread and about a four to six inch horizontal spread load to load as far as where the point of impact was. There's never been a time when we've brought this gun to the range that we haven't had some kind of sighting issue with it and I, I personally don't know what it is. I'm sure Graham has you know many um, theories on what it could be. It's definitely sensitive to the load. Um, so unlike what you might be used to with other AKs where you got 121, 122, 123 grain. Here swinging from 140 to 180 is, makes a dramatic difference in your point of impact. So it's just something you got to be aware of um, when you get your scope zeroed to it. Uh, we had the same problem with the original PSO um, or PSOP, the, the Russian scope that came with the gun uh, with only being a four power made it even harder to figure out what was going on uh, with those point of impacts. Today we shot 16 power, made it a little bit easier, but we did burn up a lot of daylight uh, having to shoot at another target to figure out our point of impact to change our zero for that. But, but it was worth it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to shoot, very comfortable to shoot. And uh, like I said, what else can you do? Seven, semi-auto, 7.6254, and you really can't. And it's so soft. <laughs> so soft for being such a large, large arm that I, j I just love it. <laughs> so for more details, definitely check out the article in Task Life Magazine. It is, I believe, the December issue uh, that should be out now when this video is published. Um, fun rifle. Thanks for watching. <laughs>